nerf this. Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Cory. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, check out the details of my videos when you get a chance. I've got a lot of good resources for you in there. I got links to my Discord server if you want to hang out with me. I got links to WHF's recruiting Discord server if you're interested in joining the WHF family. Also got links to WHF's live streamer. So if you want to see some of our CWL wars live when they're going down, give our live streamers a follow and you'll get notified when they're streaming. With that, let's get into today's video. Uh, Going to be a war recap of our, our CWL war. Just ended a few hours ago versus Crazy Monkey. Sad day for me. This will be the sixth recap I've done uh, for WHF. This is our fourth regular season match. And this is uh, and we also had two preseason matches. And this is the first one that we've lost. Super close war. Uh, good game to Crazy Monkey. As you guys can see from the score, we're tied on stars. Uh, they had us on percentage. Um, honestly, they they almost perfect ward us. They really came out swinging. They actually had a a, a dip fail towards the end. Otherwise, it would have been a perfect war. Uh, the only star they left on the board here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we cleared two of their twelves and everything else. Left an eighty-eight percent on their number one. They cleared all of our twelves. They went three for three. Uh, 12 v 12 immediately and had a bunch of town hall 12s left all over for dips and the only one they didn't clear was a town hall 9 or excuse me town hall 11 uh and just left a 99 percent on that so for us it was either get a perfect war or lose uh you know we came close couldn't quite seal the deal though uh with that well let's go ahead and get into the stats once again good good game to crazy monkey uh really really close war and uh let's get into the stats so as we get into these stats, we're going to start where we usually start is Town Hall 10. Uh, Crazy Monkey put up an excellent performance, Town Hall 10. Hit it 56%, cleared all the tents, and uh, had some attacks left over as well for scouting up, uh, put, trying to put two stars on 12s, that sort of thing. Um, we, however, struggled at Town Hall 10 once again, only putting up a 44% hit rate. Unfortunately, our Town Hall 11s had to dip or Town Hall 10, so um, definitely something that we're going to be working on over the next week. Uh, I know I'm a Town Hall 10, I wasn't in this war, but me personally, I'm going to be working my butt off, uh, trying to improve my game, because, you know, we just got to show up better than that at Town Hall 10 to set the, set the you know, rest of the war up, set, set our 11s up for success, to set our 12s up for success. But with that, let's go up to Town Hall 11. Crazy Monkey really struggled at Town Hall 11, and they came out firing. I think at one point they were like four for six on Town Hall 11s, and then after that, they just had a really tough time for a 35% hit rate at Town Hall 11. However, our Town Hall 11s, uh, they were like gods this war. Last war and this war too, just amazing, amazing showing from our Town Hall 11s, putting up a 62% hit rate this war. That's excellent. Uh, last week it was 60%. And they even improved on that 62% hit rate, cleared, they dipped the remaining 10s, and they cleared every last Town Hall 11 on the board so that we had six Town Hall 12 attempts. Excellent work from our Town Hall 11s. Uh, they really came through and really set us up uh, nicely. With that, let's get up to Town Hall 12, because this... This is the area where you can't make up for, you know what I mean? There's nobody they can cover for Town Hall 12s. And Crazy Monkey went 3 for 3 on their 12v12s. Their first three 12v12 attempts tripled every single one of them. At that point, we knew we were in trouble. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't answer it. We had six attempts, only got two of those for a 33% hit rate. So, you know, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the war in the stats there. Now let's go ahead and start on some replays. I've got one Town Hall 12 to show you. I got two Town Hall 11 triples to show you and three Town Hall 10 triples. Let's get into that now. First, we're going to take a look at our uh, one of our 12v12s. This one is done by Carbon Finn. Uh, got a really beautiful Sui Lalo on this one. Um, so he's going to start this out with a few loons right here. He's just trying to cut in this side of the funnel right over here so that he can Sui is his heroes down break into the base and go after that enemy queen really beautifully done so he's got that funnel set with those loons and that wizard behind it now the heroes can come down and he knows that they're going to walk down to the left exactly where he wants them 
Okay, and then there, now he's sitting in that test wall breaker. Good thing, too, because there is a giant bomb there just waiting to blow up wall breakers. And he gets the rest of the wall breakers in there behind as soon as that queen is tanking that wizard tower. Beautifully done. Uh, you know, king's going to walk and keep funnel, and that's fine. The king was really never supposed to go in there anyways. Just trying to get the queen in there, carve out a chunk of the base, and more importantly, get that enemy queen. Uh, this guy's also rocking a baby dragon hound in the CC. If you look at this, his queen is going to take out out that baby dragon and then i believe she goes down before she pops the hound so beautifully beautifully done there very very nice so he's got a, a large group of loons coming in there and then the blimp heading straight for that town hall uh that blimp first blimp there is kind of acting like a hound in front of those two soaking up some red bombs doing some tanking now he drops that group of loons right in there next to the town hall. The town hall hasn't been hit by anything yet, though, so it's not registering as a defense. So he goes ahead and drops an earthquake on it. That earthquake's going to damage it so that the, the Giga Tesla comes out, and then the balloons can go target it. Uses that warden ability to get him through that Giga Bomb that otherwise would just make all those loons near it disappear. So beautiful warden ability there. Coming into two multi-target infernos in the back end of this base not an easy lalo not an easy lalo at all uh you know i've said it before but you know the multi-target infernos got buff they have much longer ranges they're doing more damage now uh they can do a ton of damage to a pack of loons that heal on the back end coming into that last one was perfect beautiful but yeah laloing through two multi-target infernos is not easy nowadays especially on a town hall 12 uh any of the bases, though, to be honest with you, um, they're definitely a lot tougher than they than they were just a little a few months ago. So with that beautiful triple, really well executed there. Just it was a great plan. I think it was a wise man's plan, and uh, it's just really, really well executed by Carbon Finn. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the hit on number nine. This is going to be done by Hex. The man, the myth, the legend. And this is going to be a Queen Walk minor hit. Um, I know a lot of you guys really enjoy watching these hits, so I definitely wanted to include it on there. So he's going to be sending his queen down this side right here. And you'll notice there's an air defense there that she can't reach that would pick off healers. So if you're going to send your queen down a side like that, you have to make sure to get your miners in or whatever other troop you're using soon enough to get that air defense taken out before it starts sniping your healers. And you'll see that he does that really well here. Got a Hound Loon coming out of the enemy CC here, thus the miners used on it. Gets that poison down on the Loon very, very nicely. Uses a pair of Rages through that first section there. That's very nice. Really getting it taken out quickly. And you'll see, like I was talking about that air defense, it did go down before his Queen's Healers even got close to it. So very nice. She's got a pretty nice easy walk after this. Miners are coming into a section pretty dangerous. Got a wizard tower there. Got a bunch of ground skellies that popped up. Those ground skellies can really keep miners held up for a while. So having a heal on an area like that is definitely essential, especially if you got splash damage in there as well. King's still alive, doing a little bit of trimming the trash around the outside, but I think he's going to die pretty soon. Going to use that heal on those miners coming into that last wizard tower after they came out of the bomb tower. Luckily, they had pretty full health by the time they hit the bomb tower, so it didn't take him out. And he was patient enough to let him get over to that expo wizard tower area to make sure that last heal covered that wizard tower up as well. So very nicely done. You'll see his queen still going strong. Uh, you know, full health. Still has her ability. Um, as far as I know, she probably still has all her healers. Maybe lo probably lost one to like a black bomb or something, but she's still got like three healers left on her. So if need be, if time permits, she could take out the rest of this base, but that's not going to be necessary because he's still got miners going around cleaning it up as well. She's going to pop that hound. Not a big deal. Level 50 queen can deal with those just fine. Um, miners are still going here. We're going to go ahead and times to it because, you know, it's kind of getting slow towards the end here. She finishes cleaning up those pups, and sure enough, she wasn't even needed to get over there. The miners got enough to get through the rest of the base. Beautiful Queen Walk Miner hit by Hex, the Miner Whisperer himself. Now we're going to take a look at Lexnos's hit on number 10. He's going to use the Queen Walk into a Hog Wrecker. So, just like, basically it's like a Queen Charge, but... Oh, it is a queen charge. She's going into the base. But you're not using wall, break, uh, wall breakers. You're using that wall wrecker out in front to break her in. And it's a lot of additional tanking for her as well. So then you got the uh, max Valks in the CC. So just really good value out of that queen charge. I'm going to times two it. 
just for a little bit. I'll slow it down a little bit, but you know, that charger's kind of crawling along. So very nicely done, spotting exactly where he's got to place her so that she walks the way that he wants, gets a rage down on her because that enemy king's hopping over, got a rage through that, has a hound loon coming out. Very nice to be able to rage through that very quickly as well. Puts a minion back there near the healers. That's a pro trick right there to keep them from being able to target the healers. And honestly, that minion can put in work because by that time, they're already targeting the healers or they're targeting the queen. So usually that minion or two that you put back there doesn't even get targeted by those pups. He's able to just go around and take them out quickly with the help of the queen. So he's got that wall wrecker coming in, using the king to funnel the other side just to make sure she doesn't go walking around the base and goes inside of it. I like his choice here. Really nice way to deal with that multi-target Inferno because obviously that, that's not going to bust through the Wrecker or the Heroes real quick. Um, you do now have to be very careful what angle your healers are at if you're going to be charging into a multi-target Inferno. You want to hit it straight on. You want to make sure you're going to get it taken out on that charge because if you try to go around it, it's going to snipe your healers. You know what I mean? Look how big that range is now. It's huge. If you don't go hit it straight on, it will definitely take out your healers. Lex doesn't have that problem. He went straight into it, took it out. Out, took out the enemy queen uh took out the enemy king at the very beginning of this raid and uh you know obviously cut out a nice big chunk of the the core very nice shape left for those hogs and took out the enemy cc as well so got a lot of hogs coming in here ends up popping that warden ability to get him through that bomb tower very nice Ooh, did it continue covering him for that giant bomb too wow if it did that was a really well-timed warden ability so more than enough hogs get this done with. As you can see up top, he's already got cleanup down. You know, as soon as those hogs go down and start moving, you gotta place cleanup right behind. Otherwise you're gonna be messed with a time fail. He's not even close to time failing on this one though. Really, really well executed raid here. Tons of hogs left up. I don't know, 15, 15 hogs left up. You know, queen's still up with ability, warden's still up. Beautiful, beautiful raid by Lexnos there. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our Town Hall 10s. I've got some cool hits to show you. First one is going to be Emiliano on number 15. So, he's going to come in here. And uh, we're going to see a Queen Charge Lalo on this base. Waits for that queen to get targeted before he drops in healers. Not sure that was necessary just because there's no other ground troops on the board that could possibly steal the healers at this point. But, you know, habits are habits. So, very nice job. That baby dragon took out four buildings all on its own to really establish that side of the funnel. And also, this dead space right here and these buildings that are four spaces back from this wall, that ensures that the queen's not going to walk left because she can't even reach those buildings. She can't reach the inferno. She can't reach the expo. So she's not going to go walk in that direction. So really nice job of spotting that in this base that he's got a nice location to start a queen walk and he knows exactly where she's going to go. Got that test wall breaker in there, busts a big giant bomb location out, gets his rest of his wall breakers in there as well. Have a hound coming out of the enemy CC. Uh, but you know what? These guys been queen charging hounds for a long time. You know what I mean? Some of these old school clashers. So not a big deal for Emiliano at all. Sends a wizard in under that rage to go ahead and help get through that hound quicker and also help uh, speed through those pups. We kind of saw it on the last one with a minion. Uh, see, and there goes the minion near the healers too. So a couple tricks there to help you get through a hound. Uh, you know, if you can fit an extra wizard in there, especially under a rage, do it. It's going to help quicker. And then a minion or two back by the healers after they're locked onto the healers. Really good way to deal with that Lava Hound, you know, faster and more effectively. So look at this. He's tar direct targeting that single target Inferno with that blimp. That's just a really beautiful thing that's possible now. Now that blimp, it soaked up a red bomb before it popped. And it did have another one come out and get the loons. But, uh, you know... Two red bombs would have been a big deal. The fact that it was able to drop them right on top of that single target Inferno, you know, full health, and soak up a red bomb in the process, just really nice way to start this raid. Because otherwise, you know, you'd have to start way, way down there to direct target the, that single and, and be real patient to let them get in there closer, you know. And they would have definitely taken a lot of damage on the way in. So very nice, uh, nice way to use that blimp there. And just really direct target that first kind of difficult area to get into via regular pathing. So very, very nicely done. Queen's going to stay up this whole raid. Uh, good thing, too, that Archer Tower might take down those loons. Oh, that last loon manages to get it down. But Queen is still up doing cleanup. Got plenty of pups and minions helping with cleanup. And that is a beautiful triple by Emiliano. Very nice Queen Charge Lalo. 
Next, we have got Johnny Boy's hit on number 20. And I definitely wanted to show this one. First of all, because it's a hog hit. And this is I think this is the only hog hit I'm going to see in this recap. So I wanted to get a little variety. There's another reason I showed it too. Because he is going to send a kill squad in right at a hound. And I know I talk a lot about how that's a bad idea. And it can really negate your queen value. But it's not always a death sentence. Uh, definitely not always a death sentence. There's a lot of times where you can send in a kill squad. Your queen's going to get stuck up on a hound for a while. Um, but you can still get the value you need on some bases. And this is going to be a good example of that. You'll notice he's got two golems down there tanking. So that wall record has not even been touched yet at this point. So... Um, so it's got, you know, plenty of health. It's going to get in there pretty deep before those Valks pop out of there. He's still got some golems helping. And sure, the queen is stuck on the hound at this point, but he's got a wizard in there to help. And she's going to get through it. And he's still going to get plenty of value out of those raged Valks. They're going to be able to break through that wall. Uh, you know, with the help of the king, goes ahead and pops the, his king's ability. They're going to hollow out that whole core. And then they're going to come back and start going after those inferno compartments as well. So very, very nice, nicely done here. So... It's not ideal to send a kill squad into a hound with your queen in it. It's definitely not. But it's not a death sentence either. There's definitely going to be times where you can make it work anyways. And this was an excellent example of that by Johnny Boy. So we got hogs coming in. Nice first heal there. Coming into a really dangerous section right off the get-go. Got a giant bomb right in front of a wizard tower, which is right in front of a bomb tower. Very dangerous section for hogs. Uh, so really, really nice placement on that first heal there. It got just exactly as far as it needed to be to cover that giant bomb location. Very well done. So he brought a skelly spell on this instead of a poison. I, there must not have really been many ground skellies to deal with. Um, and kind of figured he needed the help with the cleanup a little bit more than he did, you know, with uh, poisoning ground skellies. So nice move there. Um, look at that. He got that really high hit point storage in there. And I guess he probably just didn't have an answer for that. So he went ahead and brought the skelly spell. And sure enough, that skelly spell is going to be able to take it down. So really close raid on this one. Um, only has a few hogs left, but a triple's a triple. Very nice. I definitely wanted to show it because, you know, sending a kill squad onto a hound, generally not a good idea. But it's not always a death sentence. So just depends on, uh, you know, just kind of depends on how you deal with it after that. And, uh, you know, it depends on the base too, definitely. If you if your Valks and King are still going to be able to break in and get enough value, then, then sometimes it's okay to go and kill squad onto a lava hound. With that, let's take a look at our last hit for this video. It's going to be Trevor's hit on number 24, and he's going to bust out a Skelly Donut. This is a crazy Skelly Donut. Um, if you're not familiar with the Skelly Donut, here, let's pause it real quick. Look at that. Six Skelly spells in that composition. So he's going to wait for the queen to jump into this section right here. Put a Rage down with six Skelly spells, and that's going to kill the queen. And that's also going to take out the CC. Remember, skeletons do not trip the cc troops on their own uh you know which skeletons don't skeleton spells don't so the cc troops are not going to come out doesn't matter what's in there and uh under that rage it's going to be able to take out all this now normally this base this is not going to work see this wizard tower it's just going to slaughter those skellies immediately so just looking at this i would have said there's no way you could skelly donut this base but trevor finds a way let's see he's got a freeze in this composition so let's check out how he does this very very nice i'm really curious to see the order he drops him in so he goes rage first freeze and then all six of those skelly spells um very important to be very quick with it because that wizard tower becomes unfrozen before the skellies have killed it they managed to take it down right before it starts firing on them so the the order that he did this in and the speed with which he did it was very vital to actually making it work and as soon as i saw that i was just like i didn't even think you could do that i i figured the freeze would wear off too soon you know you know one thing i will point out he brought a cc freeze and he uh made his own skelly spells level three so his his freeze is a max level freeze i don't think it would have worked without bringing that max freeze so really good thinking on his part 
As you'll see up top, he's brought in the Suicide Hero portion, just trying to cut out some value. Uh, looks like he went ahead and grabbed another Wizard Tower, several other defenses, and mostly cut the ring. If not for this cannon right here, that ring would be cut. Uh, so I think with the way he's bringing in these loons to start this raid, they're going to move all one direction, I believe. So he is effectively going to cut off that ring right there very nicely. So now he's able to move in a circular fashion around the base with his Lalo. When you do this attack, you do not have that many spells left. You have a lot of troops. You, you pretty much got a full army, uh, but you don't have that many spells left for the Lalo portion. So you have to make sure that you got plenty of hounds and that you're your, your pathing of your hounds to tank for the loons is solid. Otherwise, you just don't have enough spells to force the loons through there. So he does a really nice job of that. Um, you know, that whole first section of the base there really only used two hastes. And all of it was tanked for very nicely. And then has that back haste coming into that last air defense. You'll see he's got no more spells, but he's got a ton of loons left up. Very nicely done. Um, we'll just go ahead and speed through the rest of this. Because just clean up at this point, but beautiful, beautiful hit by Trevor on that one. I actually didn't know about this hit, but I hopped on voice. He's like, hey, is that going to be in the recap? And as soon as I watched it, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be in the recap, definitely. So here we go. Uh, once again, sad day for me. This is the first war recap I have ever had to make uh, where we lost the war. So definitely a sad day for me. Um, you know, but... Here's what I can tell you. We're going to learn from it, and we're going to come back harder, faster, and stronger next week. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nerf this!